Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, November 19th, 2019 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Just a quick note today on the Storm Center. I wrote up a quick diary based on some personal experience recently that it is more difficult than it used to be to send SMS messages from applications. Now, applications to send SMS messages are not just used for two-factor authentication, which of course is somewhat controversial, but also a lot of system monitoring tools or such tend to use SMS messages and usually use some kind of API service in order to send these messages. Well, about a year ago, the FCC, the Federal Communication Commission in the US, actually did allow carriers the right to filter SMS messages and a few of them now have started to restrict messages specifically if they are sent from automated applications. So what you may experience is that your message will just not arrive. From my own personal experience, you don't always actually get an error message from the carrier if the message is filtered. This is most likely going to happen if you're using as a from number a 10 digit long distance number. Now your options are to either switch to a very expensive short code or to use a not so expensive uh, toll free number to send your messages from. Some carriers like for example Verizon announced that they will have a special A2P as they call it application to person programs that will charge special, of course, higher rates for these messages. And users at Vogons.org, a website dedicated to essentially dealing with old and end-of-life hardware, have noted that Intel has become pretty aggressive in removing old BIOS versions for systems that are no longer supported. So it's not just that no new updates are being released, which is somewhat expected, but also existing downloads are being removed from the site if uh, this particular piece of hardware is declared end of life. So if you are currently using any Intel hardware, make sure you are downloading always the latest BIOS, the latest drivers and keep them in a safe spot. Often, and uh, I have to admit I'm doing this myself, I download it, use it, install it, then delete it, thinking that, well, uh, in the future, if I need it again, I can just go to Intel directly and get the latest, greatest version again. But this may no longer be possible if uh, this particular piece of hardware is declared end of life. Now, in some cases, you may get lucky and you may find some copies of older firmware images and the like at archive.org, but uh, that appears to be spotty and quite dated at this point. Now, members of the Bogon.org forum also set up a mirror, but of course, it's always recommended that you download in particular critical system files like this from the authentic source, Intel in this case, and not from any random third-party websites. Last week, in our internal Internet Storm Center handler email address uh, that uh, sort of a bunch of other addresses are forwarded to, we received a good number of emails claiming that we didn't pay our Outlook 365 invoice. Now, we were kind of internally joking about that, that they're so persistent in asking for their money and kind of ignored it as an obvious phishing attempt. But Fishlab now has an interesting write-up about what looks like just this campaign. Apparently, this campaign was specifically targeting Outlook 365 administrator accounts. Once they took over an account, they then, of course, would be able to, for example, retrieve emails from users within the organization or, well, establish new accounts. And then these new accounts would be used to send emails to other organizations. Since they came from within Outlook 365, these domains were properly authenticated and were less likely to raise any alarms or be thrown in a spam folder. 
In general, Outlook 365 remains, in my experience, uh, one of the top phishing targets. In particular, the somewhat better done phishes are often being used to phish either user or admin, for that matter, Outlook 365 credentials. They're then later reused, possibly for business email compromise or just to send more spam. Anybody using Outlook 365 without two-factor authentication really should rethink seriously what they're doing right now. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.